Hello there, everybody. Your August 19th edition of AM Sports Live is now on the air. I am Andrew Goldstein, and before I introduce my co-host for the day, we have a few housekeeping things to take care of. First of all, forgot to mention this on our last show, but we had our first episode of over 100 listeners a week or two ago, so thank you all very much for that, and please continue to support us here on AM Sports Live. Secondly, National Sports, the station that we broadcast for, has been on the air for one year, so happy belated anniversary to them. Uh, another thing, we missed our last show, last Friday's show, because of some scheduling conflicts, but uh, hopefully we'll try to stick to the Tuesday and Friday schedule from now on, at least as best we can, with school coming up and college applications, it could get a bit crazy, so... Just bear with us for that. You could go to our Twitter page, AM Sports Live 1, or our Facebook page at AM Sports Live for any scheduling changes. And finally, um, and there's one more thing that I, oh yeah, audio problem. On our last show, you might have noticed that Matt's voice kind of got louder and softer, kind of almost randomly. Well, what happened was we were recording it over Skype. And it's kind of sensitive to audio changes, or kind of the natural highs and lows of your voice. And Matt was kind of rocking back and forth as he talked, so there you go. It's not as much of an issue when we do it in person, but just over Skype from now on, like, we're going to give Matt a headset or something, so the problem will hopefully be corrected. And on that note, here are my co-hosts for the day. We have one uh, usual one, that being Matt Markow, and our first guest, Mr. Liam Hellstrom. Guys, how you doing? Boy, it's exciting to have a guest on, especially one with a wealth of fantasy football knowledge. Pleasure to be on here, guys. So, we have fantasy football to discuss. Season's coming up. In fact, Matt, you got to set a draft day for that because right. I'm getting excited over this. Well, first, let me apologize for missing uh, last week's show. I was actually at the mall the whole day, <laughs> and uh, I know, I know, strange excuse, but uh, tell me if you guys have experienced this uh, going to the Quaker Bridge Mall recently. So, you know, you go in, you try to get new clothes, whatever, and then have you noticed that almost every single one of the, the pants or the shirts that you try to get, pants especially, are made for super skinny, like, hipster mm -hmm. fashion style. I have noticed. Well, first of all, I'm just trying to get over the fact that you skipped doing a show with me to get new pants. <laughs> but, well, but secondly... I'm a growing boy, all right? Uh, I have noticed that. And here's another thing that annoys me about those places. Have you ever been inside, like... Abercrombie, where they have like the loud music and playing. It smells weird. It smells awful. No, you can't see. I can't go inside there anymore. Like I actually had. This was. These are in the days before they had those little electronic trackers on the shirts that buzz if you take them out of the store without checking out. But one time I actually had to go in there and take a shirt out of the store to see what color it was. <laughs> it's probably one of the most unpleasant shopping experiences. And that's before we get to the cashier who was wearing sunglasses indoors, oh, which I yeah. hate. And, well, actually, the worst store is the, is the Hot Topic in the places like that. I don't even know that store. Never been. Which is, um, it's like a dark store, and it's just playing, like, corn, and, like, <laughs> just, like, at super loud volume, someone screaming in your ear. And it's just, like, it's another place for, like, hipsters. And it's just, everything now in men's fashion, you can't get... These are your two choices. You can either get shirts that don't fit you well, kind of hang off like baggy. Mm -hmm. But if you want shirts that are a little bit like more your size and you go for the slim fit, it's like you can't even too move. Tight. It's too, too tight. tight. It doesn't even... Everything's made for either hipsters or just people with a weight problem. Oh, you forgot to mention the ripped jeans. Oh. Pre-torn jeans. I had a pre-torn jeans phase, and I'm forever grateful to Markow for heckling me <laughs> out of it. I I almost went to the dark side there, but Markow saved me. Thank you for being a friend. Right. Uh, another thing about the mall. I don't know if you guys have been in the dollar store at the mall. It's probably the most depressing place on the planet. You've I've got not. The guy at the counter with the crazy foreign. You have no idea where he's from. And then you go in the back, and everything's just a knockoff imitation. Mm -hmm. And and also, nothing at the dollar store is a dollar anymore. Everything's like a dollar fifty. I saw things up to like eight dollars in the dollar store. I mean, 
I mean, still cheap, but everything's just so poorly made. Like, I, I felt like my self esteem went went way down just being in the store. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, the one thing that I do like about Quaker Bridge Mall, I don't know if it's that mall or another one, is they have a pretty cool sports memorabilia place there. And they have, like, vintage pennants and stuff like that. I can definitely kill, like, 30 minutes in that store. But, uh, anyways, fantasy football. It's happening. Our draft is hopefully going to be in the next week or two. So, let me read you the top nine players and see if you could guess what's similar about them. Adrian Peterson, Arian Foster, Marshawn Lynch, Ray Rice... Doug Martin, Jamal Charles, C.J. Spiller, Trent Richardson, and Alfred Morris. Name what they have in common. They're all of African-American descent. Oh. Uh, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. No, uh, that's you are not wrong. But uh, the one other thing they have in common. Running backs. Running backs. Yeah, this is n nine players, the top nine, all running backs. Calvin Johnson, who set the... What is it? The lead, the single season record for receiving yards last season, uh, being projected as the tenth overall pick. Should Calvin Johnson be higher? Well, the problem is running backs are just they are the highest scorers usually in in every fantasy every year. The highest scorers are always running backs and quarterbacks, but this year there's just such a scarcity of top level running backs like. After these guys, it just falls off so much that mm -hmm. you got to get the good guys in the first round or else there won't be anything left later on. You got to. I mean, after the first guys, like you were saying, you got who? You got maybe Steven. Like, guys got to take a risk on Steven Jackson, Forte. The guys you don't really want is your main running back. Chris Johnson at pick number 23. Like, if you wait until, what is that, the third round to get a running back? your second running back, you're stuck with Chris Johnson. <laughs> and God forbid you waited that long to get your first running back. Ooh. Chris and... Johnson's been banned from my team, by the way. Never <laughs> again. Never again. Oh. I've never had the Chris Johnson experience. I, I understand it's I not it, pleasant. I had though. it when he was good. I remember I had him the one year, year the, I think like 2009. Oh nine. Uh, he broke out. Yeah, and every year it's like, okay. Disappointment. Yeah. They, all the guys say, this is Chris Johnson's year. He's going to come back. Right. He, disappointment. Dif disappointment, right. Well... I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience, but my flaw every year in fantasy is that I wait way too long to grab my second running back. So it's like, I wait until the fifth or sixth round, so I'm stuck with Mark Ingram and Isaac Redmond, <laughs> and then Ray makes fun of me every day, and I feel kind of sad. I don't know so, that name. Uh, so, Who's what, Ray? So what's your fantasy strategy for this year? Do you jump on the running backs early? Definitely first pick, I'd jump on the running backs. I don't know... I think you can't do you can't do all three run three first three picks as three running backs. I wouldn't say that at all. I'd go. Well, for me, I like t Jimmy Graham as far as tight ends go. I want to get Jimmy Graham. So if I gotta take him as maybe the third round, if I could get him in the third round, I doubt that. But so I'd probably go running back, quarterback, try to get Jimmy Graham. If not, then I'd probably go running back again. That's definitely a good strategy because. If you have a really top-level tight end, like a Gronkowski when he's healthy, or Jimmy Graham, uh, and and there's only about... We're talking about the scarcity of top-level running backs. Tight yeah. ends, there's only about three. three. Yeah. I mean, Vernon Davis, maybe, uh, Gronkowski and Graham. And everyone's waiting for Jermichael Finley to finally start playing like the player he should be. Right. Yeah, he's probably, one of the most, he's probably one of the most athletic players in the league, but he just can't catch Ro anything. Rodgers passes the ball around all the time. It's just he drops them. Or he's working on his attitude, too. I saw that. He had a bad attitude problem. He's working on it. Well, I don't know if you saw it a couple weeks ago, but uh, there was a video on Bleacher Report submitted by a fan of several like actual fist fights breaking out at Packers practice. Hey, they're hungry. They want it. They're young. Right, so I don't know whether that's a good sign or no, a bad it's, it's sign. It's a good sign. You keep telling yourself well, that. Well, uh, as we'll far as Packers, <laughs> as far as Packers receivers this year, Randall Cobb looks like he's gonna probably. I mean, last year was kind of his breakout year, but this year I think he takes a step towards being kind of an elite guy. And I would reach for him no, second round. No more Greg Jennings, so they finally committed to Cobb being the number one guy. I feel like the underlying concern with Randall Cobb last year was, yeah, he's doing great for now, but when Greg Jennings comes back, mm -hmm. that's going to drop off again, only Greg Jennings never really...
and coming back. So, I yeah, I'd reach for Randall Cobb. Would you do that? Yeah, I'd say so. But also, you got to look at his supporting cast. I mean, Rodgers, he's got he can throw it to anyone. You got James Jones. He also had a great year mm-hmm. last year. I like James Jones. Jordy Nelson, when he's healthy, is a solid. He always runs them deep and scores that post route. They love to throw to him. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, um, then you look Jermichael Finley. We're saying Jermichael Finley, and then they have all those new running backs. I like the Packers this year. I can see them going to the NFC Championship. Well, the problem with James Jones is he had 14 touchdowns last year, but he he only had about 800 yards receiving, and chances are he's not going to have 14 touchdowns ever again in his career. So he's going to kind of regress back to the player he was, Mm -hmm. which was kind of a uh, not bad, but certainly not maybe a third or fourth receiver, certainly not a first or a second receiver that he was last year. Well, we see that every year. It's usually with a running back, but it can sometimes happen with wide receivers too. The touchdown vulture, the guy who just gets an abnormally high number of targets when you're down around the five, four yard line. Tolbert a couple years ago. Yeah, Tolbert. He's the definition of a vulture. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Matt brought up an interesting point a couple of minutes ago that I want to kind of return to, which is that there's no tight ends this year. I mean, you got Jimmy Graham at 29, but he's an injury risk. Gronkowski's an injury risk in like five or six different respects. Aaron Hernandez is in jail. All right. Dennett, <laughs> Let's not mention his name, please. I just want to rub this in. Uh. And, well, actually, I remember last year, week three, when Darrell Revis went down, you were talking smack to me. I'm like, man, you don't insult the injured. The <laughs> football gods will not be kind to this. And what did I tell you? Gronk goes down. Hernandez. Well, Krug went down because of Bernard Pollard. Well, but also because he broke his forearm in that uh, Colts game in Week 12. That and that kind of started it. Then Ber- Bernard Pollard kind of accelerated that process. <laughs> right, right. But I so badly want Bernard Pollard on the Jets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of the Jets, uh, the quarterback situation there is really, really uh, worse than usual, actually. Yeah. But that's <laughs> like here's my thing with the Jets. I want them to win one game. I don't want them to be the 08 Lions. Just one game, and then I'm fine if we go 1-15. I, I just want to rig for Jadavian Clowney. What a loyal fan. <laughs> no, but that's the thing. It's long-term. If we go 5-11 and or 6-10, and congratulations. We get some player that nobody cares about, and we'll go 5-11 and or 6-10 and again. But if we go 1-15, and 2-14, and we get that number one pick. Probably the best pass rusher of the last decade goes to us. Did you, so, did you see how bad the Sanchez was in the uh, preseason game? Uh, yeah, either it was yesterday or two days ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He played three quarters in the second preseason game, which no starter ever plays. Well, because Gino was injured, Greg McElroy was injured, so they would have had to put in Matt Sims. For... I know, but I, I read on ESPN it was like, Gino Smith probably won the job and he didn't even play. Yeah. Like, that's oh. how bad Sanchez played. <clears throat> I mean, almost as bad as their quarterbacks as their running backs. Who oh they have as God. running backs? I mean. oh, oh, but uh, actually, we have Chris Ivory as yeah. our number one guy, who is ranked 51st <laughs> in the ESPN standard <laughs> rankings for fantasy. He's the 51st guy. You should spend an early sixth-round pick <laughs> on Chris Ivory. Yeah, somehow, I don't agree with this. <laughs> well, yeah, as far as receivers go, Calvin Johnson is clearly the number one, but... You can get some quality receivers later on in the Absolutely. draft. Like, there's no reason to reach for a receiver early on. I remember last year, I got Brandon Marshall like third round because everyone undervalued him. And Now, of course, this year he's, he's going to go a little bit higher. But, I mean, you can get guys like, like Larry Fitzgerald. He's going to be so much better this year with Carson Palmer mm-hmm. at, at QB. But I think a lot of people are going to forget about him because of the last couple of years he's had a bad quarterback. Absolutely. Um, like I remember, I got James Jones in the eleventh or twelfth round last year. But another position that is even deeper than the wide receivers is the quarterbacks. I mean, mm-hmm. you could get a guy like Philip Rivers, like you know, who's not an ideal fantasy QB. He's but terrible. Let's, <laughs> be honest. Let's be honest. I do not want <laughs> Philip Rivers yeah. on my fantasy team. No, I'll tell you but that. here's the thing: you can, even though Philip Rivers isn't a good fantasy quarterback and I wouldn't want him starting he's at least a starter on an NFL team right 
And who so on is, an NFL team? So that, is Blaine Gabbert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I, he's in like the top twenty or twenty. Like you wouldn't be positively screwed with Philip Rivers starting. In a ten-team league with Philip Rivers starting, you would be screwed. Because think about it: there's probably about fifteen quarterbacks that are better than Philip Rivers. In a ten-team league, you could get you could do better than Philip Rivers. Oh, absolutely. But here's my thing: do we have the do we have the top rankings of QBs? Yeah, he's uh. Just flip a little bit back in this. This is according magazine. to Sports Illustrated, right? And yeah. uh, my our listeners are going to find out now that we have cheat sheets and magazines. Philip Rivers, of us right eighteen, now. eighteen, right? So you could get the eighteenth best quarterback. Uh, he's not even on the top one hundred sixty that I printed out. And but in before... a ten-team league, that's embarrassing, though. Yeah, but like kickers are above him yeah the running backs uh but zach I... stacy the third string guy for st louis above philip rivers i'd even take a chance more on carson palmer or someone to get later yeah i don't because... know why carson palmer's ranked so low i mean 21st i feel like he could be good i really like the direction that the cardinals are going to be going in this year I like the fact that they have their left tackle back. Yeah. You know, Levi Brown was out for all of last year. And I feel like Larry Fitzgerald's going to have a rebound year. L- would you take a chance on either of them, Larry Fitzgerald or Carson Palmer? Uh, I would be more... I would be happier if I ended up with Fitzgerald than Palmer. But Absolutely. I, I mean, uh, also, in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of QBs... There's a lot of QBs now that run the option and yeah. and are, are mobile. QBs. Josh Freeman. Josh yeah. Freeman. He's a he's last year he didn't do very well. I remember I drafted him last year, didn't do great, but I like him more this year. You know they got him mature. They got him running. He's only 25. You got Kaepernick and Newton up there too. Right. Exactly. There's a lot of QBs now that can get you points with their legs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is really significant because running, rushing yards, rushing touchdowns count more than passing yards, passing, passing touchdowns. So, if you can get a QB, I mean, like, uh, maybe somebody doesn't want to take a chance on RG three because of his injury, or even like, you know, Andrew Luck can get you rushing yards and and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, that that's more valuable than. Uh, than, than, than I think your conventional Carson Palmer is. Well, mm. that actually brings up a good point. Would you take a chance on RG3 this year? Hmm. Well, <sighs> the thing is, you got to think, yeah, he might be healthy, but do you still think Mike Shanahan is going to be running him the whole time like he did earlier? No, in this, like, no of course year? not. I don't think so. So will he... You got to take away his running aspect for a little bit, and is he a good quarterback? Absolutely. But do you have to worry about the sophomore slump as well? I mean, I drafted Cam Newton as a sophomore, and he didn't do well until the second half. The second half when he's shown, but after that, it didn't really matter. Yeah, and and well, RG three. I think it all depends on where you can get him because. Well, actually, I'm looking through the uh, standard league rankings right now to see where they have him. If he's available in like the fourth fifth round i would say at that point you'd have to take them but if your options are the second third fourth round i i don't i don't i don't know if you you go that high here he is uh number 49 that's a late fifth round or at least sixth round pick i i think i'd take a chance yeah on him. In, in that case yeah the guy i'm interested about is cj spiller this year Ooh. because no nope, <clears throat> i'm not interested about taking him but i'm interested in 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 where you guys think he should be because obviously he doesn't i don't know if he gets every carry like they kind of use him well he's gonna get every carry now well, i mean he used to split time with fred jackson right. but fred jackson's in his 30s he is coming off major knee surgery i think like his second or third major knee surgery i wouldn't trust the bills to like continue that split carry thing i think spiller's gonna take over now i got a soft spot for cj spiller i won't lie he's out of clemson school i want to go to mm-hmm. but your number one college number choice one right? college choice so far but as far as healthy when he was healthy he was incredible i mean the first couple weeks the numbers he posted mm-hmm. were killer but then he got hurt and i still worry about fred jackson yeah he's in his 30s and yeah he's not great but i think with the the new coaching staff is going to rely on fred jackson but at the beginning and not give C.J. Spiller everything. I don't think they're, no matter what they say, I don't think they're going to well, give it all to C.J. Spiller. They have a rookie quarterback that they're presumably going to start, that, of course, being E.J. Manuel, and 
you know, coaching staffs. What are you usually... think? You think Kevin Cobb won't be able to win the job? <laughs> Wait. Well, first of all, he got injured on a wet mat. I don't know if you heard this, but <laughs> like he was walking off the practice field. And there was like a wet mat in the tunnel going back he to the slipped. locker room. He slipped and busted up his knee. So that's, what, that's that former eagle we know and love. So what chance does he have against a defensive end? So, uh, yeah, I feel like Manuel's going to get the start. And I feel like they're going to direct a lot of the not only rushing attempts, but targets in the passing game towards C.J. Spiller. I could easily see him getting 50 or 60 targets this year. A little off topic, but isn't um, the is, I think it might be like the Buffalo tight end or the backup tight end Scott Chandler. Which one's married to Jessica Simpson? Which one's married to Jessica? One, I think it is like the Buffalo Bills backup. Okay, tight end. I have to Google this. You're gonna now. have to check that out. Okay, Jessica Simpson married to Jessica right. Simpson. Well, I can't believe I'm googling this on <laughs> our show. Well, this it's, is gonna, it's a little off topic. This is gonna affect his draft stuff. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if he's married to Jessica no, it's Simpson. not Nick Lachey. <laughs> Nick. Nick Lachey plays football. <laughs> no, I swear. Okay, let me... Uh, Jessica Simpson, Wikipedia. I can't believe I'm doing this. Don't act like you haven't visited this page yeah. a thousand times before. Yeah. Uh, I know this well. Home sweet home. <laughs> Jessica Simpson's Wikipedia page. Oh. All right, we can discuss fantasy while we're waiting for this thing to load. Ah, oh, that Toshiba. Okay, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm doing this on a Toshiba laptop. Uh... I don't Jessica. plug brands that we don't support. <laughs> we don't endorse that. By the way, Toshiba, if you want to, send us a couple Go dollars. To personal life. Send yeah. us a couple dollars, Toshiba. Personal life, married. Come on, keep going. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Other so, endeavors, influences. Does Jessica Simpson actually have any talent? Or, uh, yeah, no, I think she sells... Um, or is she just good looking? I think no, she's just famous she, she's a business. She's, oh, here she's we go. She's big now. She's got a um, business. Oh, wait. No, you're not thinking of Jessica Simpson. Are you thinking of that Bills tight end that, like, when he scored, gave the ball to the cheerleader or whatever? I know that one of these hot blonde chicks. All right. Oh, it's David to... Nelson. It was David Nelson. Is they... he married to Jessica Simpson? No, David he's Nelson's married to on the Pats, isn't he? No, he used to be on the Bills though, and he's married to a Jessica Simpson lookalike. There we go. There we so, go. So you were, you were like. 50% right. All right. By the way, the only answer to that would be, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> the fact that you jumped up and answered that question look, perfectly, I, that I, worries me. Look, I remember everything about football. That was the... I was driving back from Maryland that day. That was the day that the Patriots beat the Jets 37-16. to 16. I believe the Cowboys defeated the Bills 44-7 to 7 that day, I want to say. And the Cowboys had an interception return for a touchdown. By the way, it's sad that you can uh, remember these scores, but you can't name the sixth U.S. president. I can name the sixth U.S. president. It's John Quincy Adams. Oh. Get off me. But I can't name, like, three actors in the original Indiana Jones, so well, it's pop culture. I mean, I mean, yeah, but that's... I mean, basically, only everyone only knows Harrison Ford, basically. Yeah. So okay, that, well, other deal. elementary things about pop culture that I have no idea about. Anyways! <laughs> All right, back to fantasy. I'm getting us off track with this yeah. Jessica Simpson garbage All right. here. Yeah, Jessica Simpson could take me off track any time. I mean, yeah, technically, saying. that is fantasy. A different kind <laughs> of fantasy, though. I'm so glad I had you guys on. Oh, okay, so uh, let, let's scan the top 40, see if there's any other... in. Ooh! Steven Jackson at number 15. I think that's way too high. He's Indeed. done, I think. He, he's, I think he's over 30, and I really don't trust over well, 30 running backs. He's, he's still younger than Michael Turner, and he's a hell of a lot more better an athlete than Michael Turner. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know if you guys saw those YouTube videos of Steven Jackson working out a while ago. I didn't. It gets you pumped up. I won't lie. Him well, and his fullback. Yeah. He, the man's an animal. He wants to play. This is his first time on a winning team in his entire career. Yeah, I feel really bad for Steven Jackson, like, that he wasted his career yeah, I on think the Rams. He's 29. 30. I think is yeah. uh, we'll see. Well, I only watch Steven Jackson workout videos, like, twice a week. But, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, when, when I do watch him, yeah, it's pumped up, yeah. No, um, I, I don't know if I'd take St I wouldn't take Steven Jackson until maybe late second, early third. If that, but yeah, I like Steven Jackson this year. Anyone, I think he's going to be a contributor to the offense and to fantasy. All right, so who's one guy that you're going to stay away from? One guy in the top 40 that you absolutely just don't want to touch Mar at all? Maurice Jones Drew. No oh, question. me too. No question. Me too. I, I had him last year in another league of mine, and uh, he's just, 
first of all, he plays for pretty much the worst team in the league. Yeah. So worst team, awful offensive line. Office, awful offensive line. It, new coach. They're. I mean, he's just in a horrible situation, and he's had so many injuries. He's just all around and unhappy with his contract. That's another one. He, he's just. I mean. He's him and Chris Johnson banned, banned for yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me throw this at you. At number twenty-one, Frank Gore wouldn't draft him. I would not draft him either. I agree I with that. But that's so. the thing. There are so many running backs that I would not draft, but I know that I'm going to end up yeah. having to draft one of them. Like last year, I would not have wanted to take Marshawn Lynch, and he ended up being really good, but. He, no, I, he's good. He's good, though. Yeah, he yeah. ended up being fantastic, but I also wouldn't have wanted to take DeMarco Murray, who I think was in four or five spots of I him, and I was it. right about that. He was turned out to be complete garbage last year. Well, so, he was hurt. It, he was hurt a lot. Yeah, he year. was. He, yeah. he might come back healthy this year That's and, true. and be good. Yeah. But again, he's he's too much of a risk. When you oh. get outside the first round, running backs are essentially a crapshoot. Darren yeah. McFadden too. Oh. I, just, I am a sucker for Darren McFadden. I I like the Raiders, just their attitude from the old days. Yeah, the nineteen seventies Raiders were probably like one of the bet, probably one of the hardest partying teams of all time. And I'm sounding like Chris Berman mm. talking about the nineteen seventies Raiders right now. <laughs> oh, how would but, Chris Berman say Raiders? By the way, Raiders. <laughs> but Darren McFadden. Back in the days of the Music City Mirror. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are they are switching their offense. They got that power O more. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about angle blocking, yeah. they dump the zone blocking thing. Their their backfield, Marcel Reese, Darren McFadden, and hopefully Terrell Pryor. That's the thuggest backfield you will find in the National Football League. You I'm heard sorry. it here first. The thuggest backfield you will find in the National Football League can be Hands found. Hands down. Stop, stealing, Stop stealing quotes from Jim Nance. <laughs> That's just... <laughs> uh, I heard him say that the other day. <laughs> but yes. Well, Ugh. I actually want to talk about, if for no other reason than, than to torture Matt, I want to talk about number 25 on this list, Tom Brady. Mm. Would... Is he gonna? Is this the year where he finally loses it? Well, I can never have him on my team because the one year that I did have him on my team, he blew his, uh, his ACL out <laughs> in the first first, first uh, game of the season. So I, I never never want to have him on my team. But uh, his receiving staff looked really really awful. But then in the first couple preseason games, they've looked pretty good and they look like they've made some progress. Like Aaron Dobson and Kembrell Tompkins both looked pretty good. Tom Brady he completed 11 passes and six of them were to Amendola, so I don't think many people have to worry about the uh, Brady-Amendola connection. Yeah, Amendola. yeah Amendola's gonna definitely be a, a fantasy asset this and, year. And uh, Zach Zud Sudfield, their uh, backup, tight backup tight end, mm -hmm. I think he's gonna get a lot of TDs like when Gronkowski's out. And, and... What, you don't think they're gonna play Tebow with tight end? <laughs> I don't know what Tebow is doing on the team, but every time I look at the second half stats of a preseason game, it's always like one for seven, you know, twenty percent uh, completion percentage, whatever. I mean, he he's just there's there's no reason to. I, I have no idea why they even signed him, but hopefully maybe they use him at the goal line or something. I don't I don't know. Well. We mentioned Tim Tebow, so we can tag our video and put the Tim Tebow tag to hopefully get the number of page views <laughs> up. Um, I okay. think everyone's over Tim Tebow now. Yeah, that's not a thing anymore. Well, that's that's a thing. Like Tebow mania and Lynn Sanity have both run its course, so we both <laughs> need like a new overhyped athlete to plug in our uh, tags to get to the, the page yeah. views. Yeah, well, the Jets, the Jets like to. To make a lot of headlines with uh, Tebow. Yeah, we're there. using the Jets tactics. You notice, here. you notice the Patriots. They usually stay low key. I mean, they usually just like to watch other people's practices and uh, mm -hmm. make oh, sure no one finds out. Oh, <laughs> too soon. It's only Not... been six years. Come on. <laughs> uh... That they got caught. <laughs> well, let's talk sleepers. I know Liam, you're gonna like this next guy. Throw him at me. Number fifty-eight, Eddie Lacy. Oh, yeah, a I'm, man among boys. Eddie Lacy and <sighs> what about Jonathan Franklin? Because I don't, I don't know too much about Jonathan Franklin, Franklin, but UCLA? I've heard that, but I've heard good things. I, uh, well, the Packers backfield, they also have Dewan Harris, Ooh. so they have three high. He was good in the playoffs last yeah. year. As far as Jonathan Franklin, I think he's going to contribute later. I don't know how good he's going to be his rookie season. He's got other guys in. But I think as far as the Packers go, they got pretty st set with uh, their running backs. I love Eddie Lacy. I mean, it's about damn time the Packers got a rumbling, tumbling running back who wasn't, you know, under 200 pounds and usually only getting a couple yards per carry. I like Eddie Lacy. I like 
straight out of Alabama, his pedigree, you know he's going to do well. He what sounded is... a lot like John Gruden there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, the guy I'm, I'm uh, confused about is Steve Smith at number 50. How is it that every year he's 100 years old, but yet he's still good? I don't understand it. Like, Steve Smith... I, I never have on my team, but somehow he, he always produces, you know? I, and also, you never think he's good when he's on your mm -hmm. team, but, like, you look at his stats. It's 74 he's... catches, 1,117 yards, four touchdowns. That's a solid year, but for some reason it just never feels that way. Torrey Smith is mad low on this ranking. 71. Torrey... Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. Torrey Smith is kind of boomer bust. He's, he's, a, a, speed... he's a deep threat guy. He's a speed yeah. guy. Like, if Joe Flacco hits him over the top, that's 10 easy points right there, but... Then you have those weeks where he's just gonna put up a one, or when they're they're up twenty nothing, they don't need to throw downfield. Exactly, you know? and um, actually that kind of applied to another Ravens player. Not the, uh, not necessarily them being up, but him being kind of boomer bust, and that of course being Ray Rice. Mm -hmm. Now I had him on one of my teams last year, and I'm really really concerned with how Bernard Pierce is cutting into oh, his carries. Absolutely. Absolutely. You saw during the playoff run how much they uh -huh. used Pierce. And during the preseason, they're mm -hmm. using Bernard Pierce more. I I would not be comfortable at all drafting Ray Rice, would you? Well, he gets a lot of receptions, receiving yards, and maybe that'll make up for his lack of carries. But, yeah, is he's always ranked consistently as one of the top five uh, running backs in the, in, in the entire draft. So, I mean, I wouldn't... If I had a top five pick in the first round, I probably wouldn't take Ray Rice, honestly. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, uh, you know, I'd look for somebody else. Foster. Foster or Lynch or somebody, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, actually, I'm intrigued by another guy uh, on 41 through 79 here. Number 74, Tavon Austin. I'm really intrigued by Tavon Austin. I think he can do it as a kick returner. He can be a wide receiver. They might line him up at running back. Now, they might even line him up at quarterback for the Wildcat or whatever whatever formation went out of style three years ago. But I feel like Tavon Austin could be a difference maker this year. Would you pick Tavon Austin? Well, he is still in St. Louis. And it's just the same thing with Steven Jackson. Bad Steven offensive Jackson, line, too. Bad offensive line, bad team. Let's not lie to ourselves. Steven Jackson, hell of an athlete, hell of a guy. I actually don't worker. think the Rams are a bad team. Well, we'll and get to they're, that. They're not bad. They're not good, but they're decent. I like. I could think of a couple players I'd want from the Rams. I, as far as Tavon Austin goes, I think they're players I'd bet on before I bet on Tavon Austin. Oh, that that's definitely valid. Well, I've got this theory. Uh, to be a good NFL player, you need a good name, and Tavon Austin. It's the reason why Blaine Gabbert sucks, uh -huh. but Tom Brady is an amazing QB. But it doesn't always hold. It there. doesn't always hold up. Like. I would have thought that Mark Sanchez would be a pretty decent NFL no, name. No, that's no, not a good no. name. You need really? you need like a Peyton Manning. That's a name right there. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. You're making me feel worse and worse about Geno Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Tavon Austin, that's a that's a Pantheon receiver name right there. That's really, I mean, if you're creating receiver, Tavon Austin's a nice nice name there to have. So I'm just saying, like Calvin Johnson, <laughs> best receiver. That's a name right there. Tavon Austin, I can see that right there. Julio Jones, that's a name. Well, just... What about Jeremy Curley? <laughs> yeah, that's that's my point. That's my point. If you look at all the great players and you look at all the bad players, great players have names, you know? <laughs> all right, here's one for you guys. Reggie Bush. You know, he's gone. He's done with Kim K. He's done with New Orleans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's he up to now in Detroit? Matt, I know that you were really high on Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush is my guy this year, actually, because uh, Detroit never has a good running back, ever. Mm -hmm. It hasn't had one since Barry Sanders, really. Oh, hold on. We got an update on Liam's phone. Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski likely unavailable for September 8th opener. No, that's fine as long as he's ready for the playoffs. Because every year... Because, listen, they're going to win their division easily. I don't care what you say about the Dolphins. The Patriots are going to win their division <laughs> easily. Of course. So, as long as he's ready for the playoffs and completely healthy and not rushed back like he was last year... I... Uh, he's got to be ready before the playoffs, though. I mean, you can't just throw him in raw in, like, week 12. I mean... The, that's essentially what the Packers had to do with Greg Jennings last mm -hmm. year, and we I saw that. So. It, and we saw that it doesn't work. Well, you have to. Fine either way. Yeah, obviously, but the point is, you have to have some kind of 
warming up period where you get okay, a couple well, of weeks if he's, strung if together. Okay, well, if he's out for the first half of the season, I'm completely fine with that. Because I see them going 10-6, and 11-5, and five, okay. easily winning their division. The AFC is just dreadful this year. Right, exactly. So I don't care if he's if he's not available until uh, until late in the season. But and back to Reggie Bush. The, the thing is, the Lions throw so much... So and Reggie Bush is such a good pass receiver, and they throw to the running back. I believe they threw to the running backs like a hundred times mm-hmm. or more last season. So yeah, Stafford attempted. I believe it was fifty or sixty more passes than Drew Brees, and I think he actually set a record for pass attempts. So if Reggie Bush can haul in eighty, eighty-five passes, get eight hundred yards, that's and and maybe three, four touchdowns. That's a significant number even if it's just 50 or 60 i still believe that's more than just about any other running back in the league right so even whatever he gets on top of that rushing yards wise that's gravy as Mm -hmm. far as i'm concerned so you add the rushing and the passing and the touchdowns combined he's going to be a a real threat i think in detroit so i'm really high on reggie bush and i would definitely not mind if he was my number one running back Hmm. Um, yeah detroit i mean you look what they did last year with joik bell I That's mean, right. Joyke Bell, talk about a sleeper. I mean, they actually utilize him, and who the hell knows Joyke Bell? Now, Reggie Bush, you got former Heisman, well, Heisman, I guess, winner. Mm. Hell oh. of an athlete. Oh, right. Who was second place that year? Mm-hmm. We have to confiscate his Heisman. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, my only concern with Reggie Bush, though, is that he might get touchdown vultured by Mikel Shore. But look at what he did at the Dolphins, I mean, Reggie Bush. Uh, he had a hell true. of a year with the Dolphins. You could tell he wanted he wanted to play. He wanted to be the number one running back. And he was. I, he, had, he had a good year at Miami. I think he'll have a better year at Detroit. And that's true. Like, like I said, only concern is that the Lions are going to put in Mikel Shore on the goal line. That's the only apprehension I have about drafting him. And really for a third, fourth round guy in a running back class that's as risky as this, you could definitely, definitely do worse than Reggie Bush. Absolutely. Well, I have another concern. I hear Chloe and Lamar going through some mar- <laughs> marital troubles. So It's not the Chloe and Lamar I know. So if he just stays away from that, then he'll be good. We, he's got a history there, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, like, if he were in... If there were a team in L.A. and he were there, if he were in San Diego, that's a problem. But he's in Detroit. No one's going to visit No one is ever... Like, do you think the Kardashians are going to start shooting in Detroit? <laughs> right, right, right. That's true. He's, he's back to them hood rats now. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I, I didn't think of that, yeah. All right, so... I can't move on without talking about Bill Simmons' man crush, Russell Wilson. What... <laughs> Uh, he is worth, according to ESPN.com, late seventh, early eighth round pick. Do you take Russell Wilson? Um, Russell Wilson's actually on my undraftable list. Not really? because of his skill, just because of, uh, I think it was week five, Packers versus Seattle. Yeah. Last play oh, of the game. I remember uh, that last game. week with the replacement ref. Oh, you can't, you can't pick. Him I, I that. hate Seattle now. I, I think Richard Sherman's better corner than Daryl Revis. Will I ever admit that? No. Besides on air, <laughs> but <laughs> I just, I do not like Seattle. Uh, Russell Wilson, I read somewhere, was the second highest scoring quarterback from weeks twelve to seventeen after Cam Newton. So. He really, because I remember in the beginning of the season, I would make fun of him, like, oh, this guy, because in the beginning of the season, he was terrible. And then as it went on, he really just heated up, and, and by the playoffs, he was really almost a top-level QB. Yeah, so. but as I remember, they had some pretty weak opponents down the stretch. They had a Buffalo game, they had an Arizona game. What? Buffalo think... and Arizona are in top-tier <laughs> teams? Actually, I Arizona think... didn't have a bad defense. Um, it's just that they had John Skelton, the QB. Yeah, it fit... <laughs> I remember that 59 to nothing game. That was comical last year. Right. Uh, all right, let's go a little bit further down into the depths of the fantasy draftable pool here. Uh, it's always interesting because there's... I always try to get late round guys. Like I got Randall Cobb really late last year. Mm-hmm. I picked Amendola really late last year. Like there's always guys that kind of slip through the cracks that aren't ranked by the ESPN rankings, mm-hmm. and people kind of forget about them. And then you can really get some bargains like last couple rounds of the draft. So yeah, it's interesting to look at uh, where the rankings are. So, what do you think about number one eighteen? I would actually take a chance on him as like my second or third quarterback. Michael Vick. I think he has great value this year. 
I would not have touched him last year when he was going in the fourth and fifth round, but he, he had, like, if for your second or third string quarterback, you could definitely do worse than a guy who could absolutely destroy your opponent with one big play. I'll tell you what, Slice. You draft him, I'd pick him up off waivers. That's another thing we're talking about. Michael Vick, yeah. Is he talented? Yeah. But is he also a big question mark? He's a big question mark. Will Liam I mean, continue as as... to ask questions and then answer them yourself? Yeah. You bet. <laughs> the, does he is he wearing his Kevlar flax suit again? Is I don't, I don't think so. Actually. How are they running it? I'm just saying he's made a glass practically. He's, mm-hmm. This isn't the Madden 06 Michael Vick we're talking about, where you can just run around the edge and score touchdowns. This is the 2013 to 2014 season, Michael Vick. You know, I think he's going to win the starting job over Nick Foles and whoever else. Yeah, but, he, he mm-hmm. definitely is. I don't know if he's going to be a great producer. He's like Samuel L. Jackson's character in, in the M. Night Shyamalan movie, Unbreakable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who, who gets that reference. But uh, well, thank you, you for that. But, uh, yeah, no, Mike Vick. Um, I call him Mike because we're personal friends. <laughs> uh, so I think he's got a new offense with Chip Kelly. Uh, and, and the Andy Reid offense, we all know, was is about as stale as stale gets. In terms of just inventive play calling, it was really, really <laughs> what you don't really like bad. the third down and five screen, uh, third down and five draw play to Bryce Brown thing that they usually did. <laughs> so maybe this offense will be better suited for Mike Vick, and even though he's older and uh, not not as fast or as athletic as he once was, he could still have a comeback in this new offense. So, is if you can get him. Really late as your number two QB, I would take him. If he's your number one QB, I would be definitely I'd be worried about yeah, that. He, behind Philip Rivers, huh, Goldstein? <laughs> <laughs> I remember the one year I got stuck with Philip Rivers, and it was he. This was the year where he was going in like the fourth and fifth round. He had put up some pretty great stats the year before, and he just fell off a cliff. It was not fun for me or anybody else involved except for the person playing me every week <laughs> all right and the opposing defense the opposing well, defense yeah. we, we, you did talk about andy reed's stale offense but is that not good at kansas city with pretty much the stalest quarterback in the nfl alex smith, alex smith. i'm you know? worried because jamal charles i always liked and he's always really a productive running back those third down and five draw plays will uh, <laughs> yeah. inflate his stats something fierce. Yeah. So hopefully Jamal Charles, because I would definitely draft him. I'm always high on him, but I don't. It, with the new offense, who knows how Andy Reid's going to use him. But well, I want to ask you guys where you stand on this. So, ESPN standard leagues are what usually 16 rounds uh, for drafting. Where do you usually start taking defenses? Because I've seen them, like, the first defense taken as late as the 13th and as early as the 8th before. Well, it really depends on how you want your team to be. I mean, like, the way I was talking about before, I want Jimmy Graham. I want a good tight end, so that reshapes my entire draft structure. If you want a good defense, if you want the Seattle or the Houston, then you're going to have to take them earlier. You know, people are going to say, like, oh, you took your defense way too early, but, you know, you also got the defense. What if right. you waited too late? You're going to wait too late, and then you're going to end up not having it. So Exactly. What are, hold on. Can you look at the defensive rankings? Because there might be some sleepers. Everyone knows the 49ers and the Seahawks. Well, here's the, the thing. It's always, it's almost always about who creates the turnovers, not yeah. who is actually the better defense. Well, the better defense usually creates term, really turnovers. Right. But I remember something like the 2010 Steelers, who had like the number one defense yardage-wise and produced like the fewest turnovers in the league, mm-hmm. and they were ranked as... So oh. I'm gonna guess something like the 11th. Yeah, or 12th. Yeah, the Bears. The Bears were insane last year. The Bears year. were out. The Bears. I remember they just scored touchdowns mm-hmm. more than the offense did. So that was unbelievable. That one week where they had some like 40 points against the Titans. That Boy, was... the Jets defense is uh, <laughs> ranked pretty high, actually. <laughs> yes, yeah, su- surprisingly. Surprisingly 15. high. Yeah. I, all I know is don't take the Patriots defense, whatever you do, because they're it looks like it's going to be another year. The number of, seven. Yeah. No, well, it looks like it's going to be another year of uh, just yardage given up by the by the bushel full. Well, that's the, Patriots. the thing. The Patriots defense, the yardage that they give up for fantasy purposes is offset by the number of turnovers they create, mm-hmm. because they were pretty high in turnover creation last year. Let me actually 
Google that and see. Uh, They're also the worst fun. clutch defense I've ever seen. Yeah. In one score games, the Patriots are the least clutch team in the league, and it's it just. Well, you drives... don't feel comfortable with Devin McCourty back there <laughs> covering. It drives yeah. me insane. You know, if a team needs a touchdown with two minutes left, they're gonna score against the Patriots defense. I remember it was like, uh, I I think it was like twenty three ten. New England was up on Seattle with. Like uh, they gave up like half, a nine, half a quarter left, they and then like Russell a, Wilson just started bombing it. I mean, they gave up like a fifty-yard bomb. Yeah, with like New England, left. forty-one turnovers forced. That is three less than the Bears, but still second in the league. That's respectable. That can win fantasy games for you. Like, I would not feel bad getting the Patriots defense. All right, all right. Well, yeah, because they, you know, how they always have that. The the Patriots do they always have that one game per year, those two games per year where absolutely everything goes right and they get like two interception returns for touchdowns it usually when they're playing the Jets or the Bills. <laughs> and a butt fumble maybe. <laughs> Don't speak those words in this household. You know, I really like Shane Vereen this year on the Ooh, Patriots because I do too actually. They're not just gonna use him as a running back, they're using him like out of the slot a lot, a lot of like movement stuff out of the backfield. Uh, as a receiver, I think he's like an all-purpose guy that I I really I, I think I think he's gonna be a good flex player. Maybe you put him in the flex. Hmm, interesting. Well, actually, I want to go back up the list for a second because one guy that I really don't like this year, and I know everybody else is high on him, Mike Wallace. Mm -hmm. I don't like Mike Wallace this year. Do you? Mike Wallace. I first of all. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, I don't know how good he is. We know how good his wife is. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. but uh, right, but yeah, on the Dolphins, I mean, Brandon Marshall went to the Dolphins. What happened? He, you know, he didn't produce nearly as high as is what he's producing now. That kind. But of... he had Chad Henney. Yeah, I'm still. I, I don't know. I'm a little bit worried about Mike Wallace. I feel like Mike Wallace is just a better version of Tory Smith. That's what I think. He's he just stretches the field. That's it. I don't. I'm not impressed by his route running. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, Mike Wallace. He's got speed. You can't argue about that. You saw that in Pittsburgh. The mm -hmm. kid's got the kid can run. As he can. Far as that goes. So yeah, he's a deep threat. But I mean, that's really all I put him up as a deep threat. Yeah, me too. Well, let's go even deeper into the draftable pool of fantasy players. We're on 120 through 160 as I'm flipping through the cheat sheets right now. Uh. Kenbrell Tompkins. Kenbrell Tompkins, Matt. Oh, your number bats. your number two receiver. I, I don't even think he's on here. I think he might even be lower. But I would pick him up off waivers. I think he's going to be pretty popular on the waiver wire this year. Absolutely. He, I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with guys that you can get late in the draft. You're essentially just, late in the draft with good QBs. Late in the draft with good QBs. Right. Like uh, Ryan Broyles is on here. Matt Stafford's going to throw the ball 800 times. Mm -hmm. it's, not all of those are going to go to Calvin Johnson. Right. right. So just by virtue of that, he's going to get po he's going to get fantasy points, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just the same it's the same concept. And and what else what else do you have to lose? I mean, would you rather go with Brian Hartline or would you rather take a chance with the receiver on the Pats? And I right. I would go with the receiver on the Pats. Well, actually um there is a guy who really piqued my interest on here, number 127, Jaquiz Rogers. I feel like he could steal some significant carries away from Steven Jackson. I feel like he's he'll be your best bet for a bench guy. Do yeah. you agree? I, I'd say as far as the running back tandems go, Jaquiz Rogers is one of the better secondary in the parts of the tandems, but... Right. Again, you don't know how how good Steven Jackson's going to be. You know, he might flop. I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to kick ass because I've seen his weight, weightlifting videos. Let's be mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. So he has not know. <laughs> <laughs> but I just see this this sad. What are we seeing over here at 120, 126? No, I'm sorry. Where From Michael Finley. No, no, no. 130, 130. 132. They put Bilal Powell. 131, Bilal Powell. They put one Bilal Powell and Sean, oh, Sean Green's in Tennessee now, but still. Bilal Powell 
above DeAndre Hopkins. And right? also Alshon Jeffrey. I really, yeah. I'm not getting off the Alshon Jeffrey bandwagon yet. I like him. It's time to get off. <laughs> it was probably never even time. It's probably never even time to get on yeah. the Alshon Jeffrey well, bandwagon. De- DeAndre Hopkins. I like DeAndre Hopkins in Houston, out of Clemson. Again, out of Clemson. It's, I watched him play a lot. But as far as like his speed, that's another kid that can run. Where would he go to college as, again? Uh, I think somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in South Carolina. I think. But uh, Charleston. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, DeAndre Hopkins. You know, they they've got Andre Johnson. They've got. Um, they still have their uh, tight end? Owen Daniels. Owen Daniels. Owen Daniels. All right, either way, yeah, all right, fading into obscurity. I think DeAndre Hopkins will come into the scene pretty big. Yeah, he, he would be de- definitely a good sleeper. The one thing I've I've really uh, – well, also, uh, Jason Witten, if you can get him, Vernon Davis, those are two guys that are kind of – and Jason Witten, Witten is always kind of overlooked because he's like a boring, consistent guy. He is very boring. Mm-hmm. But he's always going to catch a ton of balls, and he's just going to get a ton of yardage, and, and he's going to get some touchdowns. And besides, he's Romo's safety blanket. He's Romo's safety blanket. You, you know Romo has a – also a blanket in his bed that he's slept with since high school. <laughs> right, exactly. But yeah, he I think in terms of consistency, he's he's never gonna give you the Jimmy Graham numbers, but in tight end it's so bad you can do worse than Jason Witt. Alright, so for our last ten minutes or so here, we're gonna play a little lightning round. I'm gonna throw out some topics, you give me thirty or forty seconds on them. Alright. Number one pick, Adrian Peterson. Agree? Agree. Yeah, there's. I don't think there's any question that he's the number one pick. The man's a horse. I mean, you. They know they're giving the ball to him. You know you're giving. They're giving the ball to him, and he's still gonna score. Yeah, he's still. Gonna he's score. incredible. He's probably like him and Marshawn Lynch are probably the only two players that consistently still get 25 carries per game, yeah. and Adrian Peterson probably the only one who produces on all of those yeah. occasions. All right player you're most afraid of taking which means you take him but you're afraid that something's gonna happen well that's tough would you go with gronk no i, I don't I yeah would i'm, I'm gonna go with gronk on that you're, one you're definitely afraid if you take gronk i'm here. afraid if i take gronk not only because of his injury history but because i've had bad experiences taking patriots in the past mm-hmm. and them getting hurt in real life so doug martin Ooh, you're, say, you're afraid to take Doug I, Martin. You know I would take Doug Martin, but I mean, Tampa Bay, you know, they strengthen their defense, but do I have faith in Tampa Bay? Not really. Do I have faith in Doug Martin? Iffy. Do I have faith in Josh Freeman? I'll tell you right now, wavering. That's right. Sophomore slump maybe for Doug yeah. Martin. You gotta All be right. wary of that. All right. Player that, and outside the first round, player that you would, that you absolutely have to take that you absolutely love for this year i think it might have to be reggie bush honestly i'm really in on reggie bush i i can't overstate that enough he's he's my guy this year i think hmm. you know what about aj guy, green guy you gotta take up. aj green yeah but i think aj green i'd say aj green's one of the top res- receivers no doubt i mean they have him listed here as the second best receiver i'd agree with that in a second I don't know yeah. if I'd agree with Des Bryant at third, but... I actually would agree with that. Well, he did well, but he's got attitude problems, too. He's not... He's still a yeah. you know, boy in a man's body. Yeah, he's like a good Jermichael Finley. Good Jermichael Finley. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, Let's see. One guy... Uh, oh, Liam. One guy that you love. That I love? Mm-hmm. Outside of the first round. Outside so of the first round? You can't round? take Adrian Peterson. I can't take... All right. Well, I'm going to have to go... Uh, Brandon Marshall. Brandon I think, Marshall. I mean, yeah. Cutler, you, we've seen Cutler's kind of close his eyes and throw the ball. When he closes his eyes, he's throwing it to Brandon Marshall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and he's a beast. Brandon Marshall, he's an animal. And also, the new guy they brought in to be the head coach, Mark Tressman, was a, you know, one of those quote unquote quarterbacks guru, yeah. quarterback gurus, which but, is a euphemism for he's only ever worked with quarterbacks. Yeah. Like, he will ignore defense always all the time I, I don't know i can't believe i just said that though because alshon jeffrey is gonna take over and be the number one receiver hey, you watch you watch alshon jeffrey alshon jeffrey alshon... you tell me a wide receiver that's number 17 since plexico burris 
I'll shun Jeffrey. Right. Not only do I support you, if you want to appear as a guest on this <laughs> program, but we will be happy uh, to have you. Next thing you know, he's going to be shooting himself in the leg. Yeah. That's how the black scout <laughs> thing works. So you wear number 17, bullets going in be your careful. leg. careful. All right, so one player that's rated highly that you think sh- doesn't deserve to be, that you think people should just stay away from this year. I know you mentioned MJD. Yeah, but MJD, where he? he was 27th. I'd go up higher, and I'd say, I'd actually say, uh, where was I? At number 11, LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn I don't McCoy. know if I'd put LaShawn McCoy. Yeah, he's he's iffy this year. I disagree with that one. Well, I think Chip Kelly's going to Bryce Brown, is he still at Philadelphia? Yes. Bryce Brown's still there. Yeah, Chip Kelly will open it up, but he's another one. Might get injured. You know, his quarterback might get injured. You know, if Nick Foles is out there, I'm sorry, but, like, not much passing game going on there. Mm-hmm. Well, that can be both a positive and a negative because that means that Sean McCoy is, is getting touchers. That's and true. Or unlike, mean that they and know. unlike a lot of the other bad teams we, we've been describing, the Eagles actually have a halfway to competent offensive line. They are a good bad team. They I are a good bad team. The Eagles. They are a good bad I team. I could actually see a scenario where they win the NFC East this year. All right. Well, <laughs> that's... Yeah. Because the NFC East isn't good. This is fantasy football. <laughs> well, actually... Uh, I had an idea for something. Maybe we could do this in a week or two. For maybe we could have you and Ray on to do our NFL wins pool. And oh. yeah, wow. And I'll explain. <laughs> I'll lay out the rules of that on uh, our Facebook page, and perhaps we can knock at knock out that radio show when we get a little bit closer to the season. But uh, how about a guy that you really want at the end of the draft? Kind of uh, rounds. I'm gonna say ten through sixteen. Well, Way down there. Yeah, right. Way down there. Well, uh, in terms of would in the hundreds be kind of ten to sixteen or yeah. Well, like the tenth round, I believe, starts at ninety. In, in terms of sleepers, I really like Jared Cook at tight end for St. Louis hmm. because I had Jared Cook last year and he actually produced pretty well in Tennessee and you know their quarterback situation was completely messed up. Right, but. Now and and everyone says he's got all the athletic ability to be a star. He's just got to kind of put it together. And Jared Cook, he's going to be the number one guy in St. Louis. Maybe Sam Bradford has a bounce back year this year. I think Jared Cook's going to be definitely worth taking in the later rounds as as a backup tight end. We've talked to him. We've talked about him. I mean, we haven't talked to him. I wish we could. Hey, by the way, I don't know who this is, but if you want to, come yeah. on this program. Right. We'll be I, happy to I'm talk to you. I'm just throwing him out there. Who are we just saying? The backup to Ray Rice, Bernard Pierce. Mm. You know, he's he's ranked down there, way down there at 109. He's before Bryce Brown, and he's before Greg Olson at Carolina. But, I mean, Bernard Pierce, the Ravens like him. I like him. I mean, I think he's going to do well. Mm-hmm. I know that uh, Jim Caldwell was giving him uh, a lot of the carries last year, like you said, down the down the stretch in the postseason. And I can't say Jim Caldwell without laughing, thinking about how little he blinks. Um, but that was a joke for like the five people who have seen camera shots of Jim Caldwell and remember who that is. Who are listening to this Hold show? On. The Jim Caldwell. The Jim Caldwell. <laughs> is that who we're talking about? Yes, we are talking about the Jim Caldwell. But here's here's another guy that I just see at 85. T. Y. Hilton. I don't know if you guys saw him play yeah. at preseason. Yes. On the I I think that's a little low for T. Y. Hilton. I would put T. Y. Hilton above. Uh, definitely above Sidney Rice. I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually like Hayward Bay on the Colts also. Yeah. Well, what about uh, what about Ruben Randall? Is Giants. He, uh. I, I really don't know enough about him to really say anything. I was watching him play a little bit yesterday. Not super ta- – well, I mean, I guess he's talented if he's in the NFL, but – I mean, Relatively. He's special. Yeah, he's he's a sleeper, deep sleeper. All right. You know Eli's not, not the uh, top five quarterback. That no. He wins games, but he doesn't win them very pretty. Well, the, here's the thing with Eli. You have those couple games per year – where the, the Giants just give it to him to throw 55 mm-hmm. times. He'll end up with 400 passing yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. And then you get those games where he just stinks the joint out. And then the rest falls somewhere in the middle. You don't believe in Eli? I believe in Eli. Well, yeah. He, he won two Super Bowls, unfortunately. So, I mean, you can't really 
whatever he does for the rest of his career, he still won the USA Revolts, as, as much as it hurts me to say. All right, and final lightning round question. We're going to end this show with the most inane fantasy question of all time. Who's your kicker? Wow. Who's your kicker? Mm -mm. Kickers are people too, by the way. Not just punters, but kickers. I've also. got mine, Greg Zerlin. From, oh, uh, I was I was St. gonna Lewis. sound smart and say him. No, because he's got he kicks sixty yard field goals. He's got range. No problem. As as far as kickers though, that's usually that's definitely towards the end of the draft when I start to look at my team and realize how good it is that I need to draft a lower player. I go right for Seabass. I'm not gonna lie. The guy's got attitude. You can tell that he spends a lot of time in the weight room. You know, he doesn't just kick. In he, he benches, and he's not American, and he's kind of crazy. So, you know, you got a little. Sea bass also. Stay, he's know? got fantastic range. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's a gunslinger, absolutely. You don't know where it's going when he kicks it. A uh, Blair Walsh also. That's another guy I'd take. All it's right. He, he's not a. He's a receiver though, right? No, he's a kicker. Minnesota. I can't believe. Oh, hold I. on. Blair White is the. There's a lot of Blair W's in the uh, in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, Blair White. I think he retired like. Uh, yeah, the free agents are retired. Well, anyway, I'm not sure. I, I just want to say the one strategy that everyone should know is wait on quarterbacks. Wait on quarterbacks. Don't reach for quarterbacks. Counts on running backs early. Counts though. on running backs early or other, p other positions. You don't have to take Breeze. You don't have to take Rodgers. There's plenty of other quarterbacks. And this year, maybe... Like Phillip Rivers, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, in, in a 10-team league, there's no reason to reach for a Breeze or a Rodgers when you can get... A Russell Wilson or an Andrew Luck uh, in, in in much later and much better value. Yeah, I got Wilson on, like, I believe the last pick of the draft last well, year. Well, this year it's going to be a little bit different. Uh -huh. but, but my strategy, wait for quarterbacks. That's, that's what I leave you with. All right. So, Liam, any final words? Thanks for having me on the show, guys. Keep it real. All right, we'll do it. And that concludes today's broadcast of am sports live be sure to join us we hope on friday uh we'll have to check schedules uh you know if things don't work out we have to reschedule the show you can find that information i might be at the mall again this friday <laughs> uh shopping for some like tight t-shirts <laughs> tight yeah. v-necks and uh super <laughs> hipster jeans pre-torn jeans Pre yeah jeans. <laughs> yeah oh um, um, boy all right well like I was saying, if there are any scheduling changes, be sure to follow at AIM Sports Live 1 on Twitter, like our Facebook page, AIM Sports Live. You can find all the details about the show there. And we will try to uh, come back here on Friday. Your August 19th edition of AIM Sports Live is now off the air.